Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today you're joining me at this uh, lovely rainy day here outside my office. Awesome weather, so I'm gonna drink to that. Cheers. And uh, before we get started, obviously the customary wristwatch check. We're in the uh, lovely Hamilton Trent automatic here today. It's uh, it's blown my mind this watch. You know, I I've talked trash about ETA or ETA movements for years on the channel and. I still have a lot of things about ETA, ETA that I don't like, but you know what? Despite the fact that this watch has a 2824 movement in it, which honestly is a terrific movement, I adore this watch. I just think it's super classy, mid-century modern kind of going on here. Definitely would fit in in like Manhattan in the 60s. Absolutely adore it. If you want to check this watch out, I'll put a, a link to the Hamilton Trent Automatic review uh, in the description below. I reviewed this watch. All right, let's get that out of the way. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. So. The topic today is extremely important to me, and I, I really think this is something we should talk about. And the topic of this is don't buy a watch for status. And this is a trap that a lot of watch collectors have fallen into, and I'm actually one that's fallen into the same trap myself. So what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is buying a watch only because it's expensive, or buying a watch because you want people to you know, notice it or you want to be feel like you're being part of the group or you just think that's what is expected of you. You know, I've tried to talk about this stuff on my channel quite a bit, but I don't think I've ever really gotten to the topic as much as I should have. And I'm guilty of this. So what do I mean by this? I mean, you know, feeling pressure to buy a high-end watch, especially, you know, one that has a, a big name brand to it, not because you necessarily like that watch, but you just want to buy that watch because you think that it's something you should have based on your income, you think it's something that people would respect you if you had, or you just feel like it's the social thing to have, or you feel like people wouldn't respect you if you didn't have one kind of thing. And, you know, I think it's kind of an unstated thing that we've all kind of experienced this to some degree or another. I know I, I personally have, and I've made a lot of terrible mistakes in buying and selling watches because of this pressure when I first got into watch collecting. You know, when I first started getting into watch collecting, it was because I just, I liked watches. And I watched some of the older Bond movies. I've said this before on my channel, what really got me into watches were really two things. The one is my grandfather has a 1969 or 70 original Omega Speedmaster, the Moon Watch. And I remember that, and I still see that on his wrist all the time. That watch really spoke to me. And I remember watching the Pierce Brosnan movies with the Omega Seamaster, and that really got me into watches. Um, but what happens is, is that passion which was pure of me just liking watches, once I started looking at luxury watches, I, I kind of got into the filter of, well, I may like this watch, but maybe I should buy this watch instead because people respect that watch more. So what do I mean by this? Um, when I first started getting into watches, one of the first watches I picked up, um, kind of by the way, was a Breitling Colt. And I loved the Breitling Colt. Um, I actually went out looking for an Omega Seamaster. They didn't sell an Omega Seamaster in the store, but they had Breitling. And I bought the Omega, or the Omega, I bought the Breitling Colt. And it was a tremendous watch. And I'll tell you what, I never should have sold the watch. Everything about the watch made me happy. It had a beautiful bracelet, it had a beautiful case. I had the uh, the Colt with the, the white dial. The watch just felt like money. It was a greatly, it was, excuse me, greatly. It was a gorgeous looking watch. Absolutely like elegant, you know, just like timeless style. You guys may agree. For me though, I just thought the watch was dropped at gorgeous. And I'll tell you what happened to that watch. I sold that watch because I wanted something more expensive. I know, it sounds ridiculous, but that's the thing. I, I totally ignored the merits of that watch and I decided that I needed something with more prestige. And this is eight years ago, I think I, this, this all took place, but I was, you know, I was younger. I was 20 at the time, 28 now, and I'm still kind of young or old, depending on how old you are watching this. Um, but you know, I, I kind of got sucked into social pressures and I'm like, at, I was at a point where I could have afforded a more expensive watch. <clears throat> There was nothing about the Breitling Colt that I didn't like. In fact, like I said, I adored it. But what happened was is that, you know, I didn't feel like I, I was jealous of people that had nicer watches than me. I mean, the truth of the matter. Um, and we see this a lot of times when people come into some money. You know, it's like the second they get something that they like, somebody that they know gets something more expensive. I mean, like billionaires do this all the time. They're always one-upping each other on, you know, they're, they have to have the longest, the largest yacht or the most expensive penthouse or, I mean, it's, it's just the way society is kind of geared. It's whenever we get something, if we see somebody else that has something nicer than what we have, we want to have it too. We don't like to be outdone. I shouldn't say, I mean, not all of us are like that, but I know certainly some are, and I've been like that too. And that's exactly what happened with my Breitling. I love the watch. There was nothing about the watch that I really didn't like, 
But I saw people with nicer watches than me, and I got a little insecure, and I sold the Breitling, and I had to have a, a Rolex. And that's when I actually went and got a Rolex Submariner. And I had the Rolex Sub for five years. It was a good watch. Um, but truth be told, I actually missed my Breitling Colt. And I think, in hindsight, looking back, the Breitling Colt was a better watch. Now, there's a whole bunch of reasons why you could argue about why the Rolex Submariner is a better watch than the Breitling. As an in-house movement, it has way better resale value than the Breitling Colt ever did. There's a whole multitude of reasons why the Submariner could be seen as a better watch. But for me and my taste at the time, when I made this transaction, I didn't make the transaction out of dollars and cents. I made it out of insecurity and I bought another watch only because I felt pressured to have a more expensive watch so that people would respect my collection. And I see people fall into this trap all the time. Another watch that I really, really regret selling is I was able to buy an Omega Seamaster Chrono. And I'll post a video of it here. Hopefully it's floating over my hand right now. Because um, I reviewed this on my channel a couple years ago. And I stole that watch. I got that watch for like $850, something like that. Something crazy. Might even been less than that. And I had it for a couple weeks and it had a Valjoux 7750 movement in it. And I just decided the watch wasn't good enough for me. Everything about it I liked, I really liked the way it looked, and somebody offered me more money than I paid for, and I sold it because I wasn't wearing it, because I felt insecure wearing it. And I know you guys, there's probably several of you that say, you know, well, you were insecure about wearing an Omega. But that's kind of the way it goes. I mean, once you get into the community, if you have the slightest bit of insecurity or if you want to fit in, it's like nothing is ever good enough. And you get so easy to fall into this mindset of no watch is good enough for you. And it, it becomes you know, almost like an addiction. You want to have watches of higher and higher levels. You want to have more grand complications. You got to have a power reserve and you have to have a chronograph and you have to have a moon phase. And it has to be, we well, have an Omega, then you have to have a Rolex. We well, have a Rolex, then you have to get a Patek Philippe. We well, have a Patek Philippe, then you want an Along Zona. I mean, it's, you can so easily fall into the trap of not buying watches necessarily because you like them, but buying them because you want to be perceived as having a good collection or you want to fit in or you want people to think that you're wealthy or there's, there's a whole multitude of reasons. And I think this is very important because I've seen this happen a lot in the community. And you know, fortunately most of us, you know, like myself, I feel like I've been fortunate enough to have matured and I'm kind of beyond that. If you guys watch me, you'll see me wear $30 watches, you'll see me wear $30,000 watches. The point being is, I was able to get to a point in my life where I just buy what I like. And there are cheap watches that I like and there are expensive watches that I like. But I'm buying what I like and that's what matters. And I'm seeing it time and time again where people feel pressured to buy watches that they really don't like and they're mistakes. You know, they don't like the watches, they buy them because they just want to fit in. And they're basically trying to get people to approve them. And the people that they want their approval from are people you really don't want approval from. Because they're people that are judging you for what you have. And those are not good friends and those are not people you need in your life. You shouldn't be you know, wasting your time and money to impress people that don't matter. And you know, we've seen this time and time again. You know, there's even some people on YouTube, whether or not it's true or not, you know, they, they portray to the world that they actually took it to an unhealthy level to the point where they were, I'm not gonna say whose name this is because I'm sure you guys can figure it out if you watch them, but they basically bought a bunch of watches they couldn't afford on credit cards and put themselves massively in debt to have a collection far beyond their financial means to impress people. And they put themselves in major financial debt because of it. I mean, so that's an extreme example, but I mean, here you have someone, and you know, if you don't know who I'm talking about, you can, I'm sure, know somebody else that may have done this thing. I'm sure we all know people that have bought things they can't afford. You know, they bought cars they couldn't afford, they bought houses they couldn't afford, you know, they buy watches they can't afford. You know, they may be making a minimum wage job, but then they max with their credit cards to buy like a Patek Philippe Calatrava. You know, not only is that a terrible financial decision, but why are you doing that? especially if you're buying it for social pressure because you want to fit in and you're trying to buy influence with people that don't matter, people that are judging you for materialistic reasons, people that don't give a shit about who you are as a person. So I tend to have on these videos where I go on long rants and ramble. I'm going to try to do something a little different, trying to get better, you know, make these things more short. So I'm going to try to cut it off here, but I think you guys hopefully all know what I'm talking about. Again, you know, I've been very fortunate. I've had tons of watches and I've fallen into this trap too. So what's, what's the takeaway for you guys? buy what you like and be comfortable with what you like. Don't try to impress people that don't matter. Impress yourself. Buy stuff that's going to make you happy. If a Seiko Monster is your dream watch, that's totally cool and you'll be a buddy of mine anyway. But, you know, what have you. I mean, and, and I always tell people too on this channel, you know, some of the watch brands that I don't like. I have an opinion. What's the old expression? Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, right? Just because I tell you I don't like a watch or some other YouTuber or some friend of yours tells you they don't like a watch, 
that should not dissuade you from buying one because everybody is entitled to their own opinion and everybody should buy what they like. If Tog Heuer is your favorite brand, and I know I dog them on my channel as do a lot of people, you know what, if that watch makes you happy, go buy that watch because that's what you need to be determining. Is it something that's gonna make you happy? Don't be pressured to impress people that don't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it off there. What do you guys think? Tell me what you guys think below. Um, just a couple other channel updates just so we can kind of stay on trap, time trap, on task. Uh, I'm becoming a victim of my own success and I owe that so much to you guys. I am so blessed to have this following and to be able to interact with you guys. I mean, just getting able to talk with other watch people, you know, all of us that have this, this great passion for watches, talking to you guys in the comments. I, I get your emails, I get your comments. I am so blessed. Um, unfortunately, there's only 24 hours in a day and seven days in a week, and I'm kind of running out of time to do all this. So I'm gonna look into maybe doing some live web chats, maybe once or twice a week, because I anticipate coming soon, I'm not gonna be, be able to answer all of your comments. And that really, it sucks, because I, I really, really, really like the connection that we have. I love being able to check in with you guys and share with you guys. So it may be that we end up scheduling some time where we can kind of talk and you guys can send in questions and comments and we can kind of interact in a live web chat. So just something to keep in mind that I may be going to that. If I can't respond to your comment, please know that I read them and I really, really, really appreciate them. Uh, coming up on the channel, I'm gonna try to redo one of my old replica versus real Rolex reviews. I realize my older videos suck. I'll be the first person to tell you. I'm always trying to get better. You know, you guys, obviously, my audio quality still isn't the best. My lighting still isn't the best. Every day I'm trying to get a little bit better. Bear with me, this isn't my day job. I'm not an expert at this like I am with other things. Um, so I'm working on that. And uh, just one other quick thing, I'm excited too. A guy contacted me out of Toronto, another watch enthusiast who's starting his own company. And he's sending me a watch that he's designed and he's gonna start selling. So I get to review his watch, keep an eye out for that as well. So talk long enough, guys, thank you so much. I am so blessed to have you guys following me. Let me know what you think below. Have you fallen into the trap? Have you been you know, guilty of buying watches or you know, cars, houses, things that you did because of the wrong reasons because you were worried about how you came off and how people would, you know, how you'd be portrayed to other people. So thank you so much. Have a good day, guys.